Tom, I want to talk a little bit about the concept of ERI, if you allow me, um, which is sort of an interesting but quite important topic when we talk about energy. Now, we're all familiar with um, with a return of investment in monetary terms. So you put $1 in, get $2 out, you know, great. You know, two to one EROI, uh, sorry, ROI, return of investment, you've made a lot of money. The same concept exists in energy. So again, remember I said before, in order for you to have access to usable energy in the form of electricity or heat or anything else, you need to first disperse energy to make that energy, right? And that's what we call ER, or energy return of investment. And um, that actually measures the net energy efficiency in the, I call production of energy, there's no production, right? So when you think about, people talk about efficiency, always think efficiency and consumption of energy, right? So how efficient is my car? How efficient is my lamp? How efficient is my power plant? But very few people think about the efficiency of the generation of the energy. And that's even more important, you'll see why. So going now, I love about history, going 700 years into history, this is an example for the UK. So you can see this is the percentage of GDP allocated to energy expenditure. So literally, historically, we as humans used two thirds, 70% of our time, of our GDP, of everything we have to survive to collect the food, to keep us warm, to feed the animals. So we've spent primarily our time on surviving in the form of feeding us and, and keeping us warm. Now with the industrial revolution and, and, the, and, the, yeah, and, and the discovery of coal at, at, at large level, we were able to suddenly, look, reduce the time spent to 10%. Right. So, so today's GDP is seven, eight, now probably even a bit more, but somewhere between five to 10, 12% of our GDP is actually expended on collecting the energy we need to keep us warm and to keep us fit. So that is a, a, um, one of those, those important things that happened in the industrial revolution. And this 90% of the time, we can now actually start playing soccer and watch movies, you know, and play with our kids and all those things that you couldn't do before. I mean, it's literally what's happening. Okay. So uh, you understand the concept. Now, interesting is that the most efficient way of generating electricity in this case is nuclear. Like nuclear is an extremely efficient way of um, uh, generating electricity. And right now, I'm only talking about EROI. I'm not talking about money, nothing else, just EROI. Of course, nuclear is expensive. I know that. Now, the, the second most efficient is probably hydro. So hydro, you know, you build hydro dams, you know, you have to expend uh, energy to build those dams and to, you know, to, to put all the things in place. And then the third is probably coal and gas, so thermal, right? Thermal is, has been, with the industrial revolution came the whole, you know, the, the steam engine and, and, and the optimization of that. That's a very efficient way of producing or regenerate electricity. Interesting is, well, then why are we not using more nuclear and, 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 and only so, and so much coal and gas, 60%, 60%? Well, because, because nuclear is very expensive. Um, hydro is also a bit expensive, depends on but the cheapest actually is thermal power generation and coal is even cheaper. It's like gas is a bit more expensive than coal, but on average it's both very cheap. What's interesting is that the, the so-called green ways of generating electricity are rather energy inefficient. So biomass, solar and wind have a significant energy inefficiency in them. The energy efficiency has to do with energy density. So the energy density per square meter for solar or for wind is very low. So the same with biomass, you need a lot of space and a lot of things to do, you need to expand a lot of work before you actually get something useful out. And that's where this low EROI comes from. And because it's low EROI, in fact, they're actually the most expensive, truly the most expensive. And here I say the full cost of electricity, I don't say the leverage marginal cost of electricity. So when you're honest and you count the system cost, not some marginal cost matter which you're told in the press, then you will find out these are actually the most expensive on average. Not always a certain application that's different. Now, interesting is that in order to sustain our modern civilization, our modern society, there's some argument we need a minimum EROI of about six to 10 times uh, to sustain where we are. Otherwise, we would go back to you know 300 years ago where our ancestors you know, spent six of their time of just collecting you know, energy. So the, there is, in the academic press, um, there's a lot of uh, in uncertainty about this, but there is a lot of word, and in my view, from what I'm understanding, it is the case that if you were to go 100% wind, solar, and biomass, you would literally, on average, be below the minimum required energy efficiency for modern civilization. And that has a lot of implications if you think about it. 
By the way, the Romans were the most advanced civilization prior to the Industrial Revolution, and they had about a two to one, roughly, just to put things into perspective. That's why also Roman cities couldn't grow above one million people, because they couldn't get enough energy into the city in the form of food and wood to keep themselves warm. So, so the city size back then was limited by energy supply. So, so cities only started to skyrocket after the Industrial Revolution, because they could actually get enough energy into the city. Yeah. Interesting, interesting fact. Now, of course, technology will improve all of these efficiencies over time. That's also clear. And you know, we you know over time we'll get better in all of these things. 